So thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak today. I will be taking a step back before the test that was actually discussed by the previous speakers and look at innovation in terms of sample collection. So the work I'm presenting has been published last year in the Journal of Open Forum Infectious Diseases. And most of the work was done by Gamechu Chiriso for his master thesis. So I think most of you know that cutaneous leishmaniasis is not uh, a deadly disease, but that it still can cause a lot of impact. It can cause uh, lifelong scars, long-standing lesions, and it's a common disease in many countries in the world. So what I want to highlight here is that typically CL lesions are described as a nodule on the site of the sandfly bite that then turns into an ulcer with a raised border, such as you can see in the picture here. Um, but actually, in a lot of parts of the world, these ulcerated lesions are not the most common lesion type. And uh, lesions which are nodular or papular, crusted or diffusely swollen are more common. So I want to take a little sidestep to Leishmania etiopica, which is the species that I mostly work on. So it's the main species for CL in Ethiopia. And it's relatively severe in terms of treatment and clinical presentation. And as you can see in the pictures, there's a wide spectrum of disease from localized small lesions to mucosal lesions, which mostly affect the lips or the areas around the nostrils, to diffuse CL, which is the most severe form of which you can see a very severe example in the picture. So for CL diagnosis, most of the sampling methods are uh, invasive. The common ones are punch biopsy and skin slit smear. So they are painful and punch biopsy may actually lead to bleeding, scar, scarring, and uh, also infection. So these samples are usually tested either by microscopy or by PCR. So there's a need for non-invasive or minimally invasive sampling methods. And in the past years, we've seen several of such uh, initiatives um, for instance, cytology brushes or filter paper, which you can see in the pictures at the bottom. But as you can see, these actually depend on uh, tissue uh, from the lesion being absorbed on the sampling device, which doesn't make them suitable for many lesion types. Um, so that's why we started looking at the microbiopsy device. So this is a device that's been manufactured by Trajan in collaboration with several Australian universities, and it mimics the sand fly bite. So it actually goes uh, relatively superficial, and uh, it's a, co a combination of cells and blood. And as you can see, compared to a conventional punch biopsy, it's very small. Um, on the right picture, you can see that there's a tiny lancet which goes into the skin when you flick the, the plunger. So we were able to uh, obtain some of these microbiopsy devices. Um, so there was already one study in Ethiopia which looked at whether the microbiopsy device could be used to detect carriers for Leishmania donovani. And in this study, they also detected one DCL patient where they could uh, find Leishmania etiopica. So we know that DCL generally has high parasite load. So we wanted to see if the microbiopsy device could be used for a wide range of CL lesions and for different kinds of presentations. So we carried out a project at the Leishmaniasis Research and Treatment Center in Gondor, Ethiopia. And this project was a pilot study, which was part of a larger study, which looks at sampling methods and different tests. So we took CL suspected patients who were 18 and above, who were not on treatment, and not diagnosed with co-infections. And then we compared the microbiopsy sample, um, and which was tested by PCR, to a skin slit sample tested by PCR. Um, so we took the samples at the same site, and then we asked patients to rate the pain score. Um, the microbiopsy was directly stored at minus 80. Well, for the skin slit, we, we uh, process the sample according to routine, which means gym sustaining, microscopy reading, and after that storage at room temperature. And then we scraped the smear and used that for DNA extraction. 
while the microbiopsy was extracted directly. And we used a very sensitive kDNA PCR for Leishmania detection. So moving to the results, um, we included a total of 29 patients, uh, and we were able to include some MCL and some DCL patients along with uh, LCL patients. And what you can see here is that the lesions were generally quite severe. Most patients had a lesion of a year, uh, median size of six centimeters, and most lesions were on the face, which makes their impact bigger. And what you can also see is that um, ulceration was not one of the most common lesion presentations. So surprisingly, the microbiopsy was able to detect most uh, patients, which was not what we expected because the sample is much smaller than for the skin slit. So 17, this is a Venn diagram, and you can see 17 patients were positive for microscopy as well as the two different PCR. And then nine additional patients were positive for both the skin slit and the microbiopsy sample. Well, we had three patients who were only positive for the microbiopsy sample. So when we compare the skin slit to the microbiopsy directly, uh, we don't see a systematic difference in terms of CT value, which is a proxy um, for a parasite load. But what you do see in the, in the figure on the right is that patients had sometimes quite big differences between the CT value for one sample as compared to the other, which was sometimes in one direction and sometimes in the other direction, which suggests that there are random, but sometimes quite large variations in parasite load. What we also saw is that the pain score for the microbiopsy is much lower than for the skin slit. So moving to the discussion, based on these findings, we think the microbiopsy is a promising alternative to more invasive sampling methods as it was able to detect all lesion types of CL, patients didn't find it painful, and it was able to capture parasite material for all patients, even though the volume is small. And it was actually better than the skin slit sampling, which was not what we expected. So of course, there are a few limitations. The sample size was very small, and we don't have a, a golden standard for these kind of studies. And an interesting question is, why the skin slit PCRs were not positive. One reason could be the difference in the sample processing, but another reason could be that perhaps since the microbiopsy mimics the sand fly bite, it could be that parasites are optimally placed for transmission by the sand fly bites. So moving on to perspectives, um, we think that the microbiopsy could be a new diagnostic tool for well-equipped molecular labs, especially since species typing also seems to be possible. Uh, but for this, uh, we would need a larger scale and a cheaper production of these microbiopsy devices. And for um, labs in more developing countries, such as in Ethiopia, at this point, I don't think it's directly um, suitable for diagnosis, but perhaps if we can com combine the microbiopsy with cheaper and faster techniques, for instance, the ones that uh, were mentioned by the other speakers, it could be feasible in the future. But for now, I think the microbiopsy is a very useful tool for research, for instance, for clinical trials or longitudinal studies where you want to monitor what happens in the lesion over time as the lesion is healing. And the last point is that uh, now I'm talking about CL, but actually the microbiopsy could be useful for many other skin conditions, uh, NTDs, and actually beyond. So I would like to thank you for listening, and I would also like to thank all these people and institutes that have made this work possible. <laughs>